Hello everyone, my name is Mayuru Bale. I am Assistant Professor in Civil Department, WIT Solapur. Today we are going to design a cascade aerator. What is the learning outcome? Students will be able to design a cascade aerator of WTP, that is water treatment plant. So what is cascade aerator? It is an aerator in which a water is allowed to fall freely with the help of gravity such as the large amount of air is exposed to atmosphere sometimes when we can do that by the aid of turbulence. So if you can see in the diagram in the middle part or upper part there is an inlet shaft through which water is coming into the aerator system by which the water is being pushed and it is made to fall freely through the steps. So these are the steps which we can see. After coming down, it is collected in the collecting channel or what we call launder. And through the launder, the water is taken out from the aerator. So this is the typical diagram of aerator where you can see the inlet shaft is provided in the middle. These are the steps. This is the tread and this is the rise of each step. How many steps we have to design? Even this is the collection launder. So there are two collection launders if you are cutting uh, by cross section and that's why whenever we are designing the collection launders we have to divide the discharge into two because whatever the discharge which is coming it is divided into half. What are the design criteria? The velocity in the inlet pipe is generally considered to be 0.3 to 0.9 meter per second. The number of steps in aerator we have to consider between 4 to 6. The head requirements is generally between 0.5 to 3 meters. So maximum height of aerator is always kept about 3 meters. The spacing or rise of each step is generally taken between 0.3 to 0.7 meters center to center. The space requirements is generally provided between 0.015 to 0.045 meter square per meter cube per hour. The target efficiency of gas removal is basically kept between 20 to 60 percent for CO2 and 35 percent for H2S gas. So let us have one design problem uh, to understand how to design a cascade aerator. So what is the design problem? Design a cascade aerator for inflow of 15 MLD. Assume suitable data. So first step is to design an inlet pipe diameter. That is your DP. That is the shaft inlet diameter. We know the flow rate which is our capital Q but it is written in uh, 15 MLD. You have to convert it in meter cube per second as meter cube per second will be helpful in only step 1. Therefore, 15 MLD can be written as 15 into 10 raised to 6 which is in liters multiplied by 10 raised to minus 3 we are converting liters to meter cube divided by 24 we are converting days to hours multiplied by 60 hours to minutes multiplied by 60 minutes to seconds. So automatically your answer will be coming about 0 0.1736 meter cube per second. Let us assume a velocity through a pipe which is to be 0 0.6 meter per second. You can consider between 0 0.3 to 0 0.9 meter per second. We know the velocity, we know the discharge, we can easily calculate area of inlet pipe that is capital A which can be written as Q by V that is flow rate divided by velocity which is to be 0 0.1736 meter cube per second divided by 0 0.6 meter per second. So automatically you will be getting the value 0 0.289 uh, meter square. Now we know the area, we can easily calculate the diameter because we know the area of pipe which is by d square by 4. So putting the values in it which, we, which can be written as 0 0.289 which is equal to pi d square by 4 by which we can get the value of dp to be 0 0.606. We can take the equivalent value that is 0 0.7 meters. So our diameter of inlet pipe or inlet shaft is 0 0.7 meters. So if you can see this is the diameter that is dp which is to be 0 0.7 meters. Now coming to the design of aerator. In that we have to first assume a area required for design of aerator which can be 0 0.03 meters square per meter cube per hour. 
in this step we have to change the flow rate to meter cube per hour fine how we can write it 15 mld can be written as 15 into 10 raised to 6 which is in liters multiply by 10 raised to minus 3 which is meter cube per liter divided by 24 because we want in hours so we are converting day to hours by which we will get the value 265 meter cube per hour we ja we can calculate the area of bottom cascade aerator that is the bottom uh, step last step of aerator which is the big size uh, diameter we can calculate it by multiplying the area required to the uh, what we can say flow rate how we can write it that is 0 0.03 which we had assumed multiply by 625 which is the the flow rate we can get the value 18.75 meter square total area of bottom cascade aerator will be area of bottom aerator plus area of inlet pipe so it will be 18.75 plus 0 0.289 meter square it the total will be 19.039 meter square so this is the area of total bottom cascade aerator now let us assume there will be total four steps you can take the range between 4 to 6 now the bottom area we know that is the last step that is the fourth diameter so the area of bottom step is pi by pi d square by 4 that is all we know so for the last step and its diameter we are writing d4 so how we can write it area of bottom step is equal to pi d4 square divided by 4 and we know the area that is 19.039 from the earlier step we can get the d4 so d4 will be coming about d4 will be coming about uh, 4.92 meters let us assume the height height of aerator uh, to be 2.4 meters we can take between 0 0.5 to 3 meters we can check whether our step still now is right or wrong to by calculating the rise of each step that is the rise of each step so it can be written as total height divided by number number of steps so we had assumed 2.4 meter as a total height and four steps so 2.4 by 4 we will get 0 0.6 meters but the range of rise is between 0 0.3 to 0 0.75 as it is coming between the range so our design till now is right so till now what we had found out there are total four steps total height will be 2.4 meters a rise of step is coming to be 0 0.6 meters and total area of aerator is 4.92 meters these are the th findings we had done till now when we are looking uh, in a plan when we are looking from the upside we can see this is the launder that is the largest diameter where the water is getting collected and it is as it is going out from the shaft so this is step one after that it is going to step two then step three then step four and collecting in the launder so we had found out the diameter of uh, the last step that is d4 which is coming to be 4.92 meters now how to calculate the diameter of third uh, uh, step we can use the formula diameter of bottom step divided by total height of diameter that will be one ratio which will be equal to diameter of second to that bottom step divided by height of aerator minus rise of respective step as the third step is next to the fourth step so we are subtracting the uh, by only one rise that is 0 0.6 by which we can get from the shaft height how much will be the height till the third step so it will be 2.4 minus 0 0.6 so this is the uh, what we can say proportional ratio so we can write it as 4.92 divided by 2.4 is equal to d3 divided by 2.4 minus 0 0.6 by which we will get d3 as 3.69 meters so here you can see d3 we are getting as 3.69 meters similarly you can go for the second uh, step formula will remain same but you can see the rise of the step will increase by 0 0.6 because you are going up slowly so rise of the second step will be 2 into 0 0.6 so it will be coming about 1.2 so 4.92 divided by 2.4 will be equal to d2 minus 2.4 minus 1.2 so you will be getting d2 as 2.46 meters 
so here you can get the value that is d2 is 2.46 meters how to calculate the first step diameter this part will remain same but if you can see in the right hand side the rise of respective step from the top will be total height minus 3 multiplied by the rise because uh, from the bottom you can see uh, two steps plus third step and this is the fourth step so three steps into its rise that is 0 0.6 plus 0 0.6 plus 0 0.6 or 0 0.6 multiplied by 3 that will be 1.8 so from the top you have to subtract the height from the bottom that is 1.8 so it will be coming about 2.4 minus 1.8 that is 0 0.6 so you will be getting d1 as 1.23 so similarly you can see the d1 will be 1.23 now we had found out the rise but till now we didn't had uh, found the trade the trade of each step is having the formula as dn minus dn minus 1 divided by 2 where n is the uh, step n is the diameter of a particular step so if you are choosing uh, d2 right so what will be dn minus 1 that is d1 if you are going for d3 here it will come d2 if you are going for d4 here it will come d3 so d3 minus d2 divided by 2 or d d4 minus d3 divided by 2 whatever diameter you want to take except d1 so you will be writing as i am taking d3 so it will become uh, 3.69 minus a d2 that is 2.64 that is 2.64 divided by 2 so my trade of the step will be 0 0.615 meters so this trade will be 0.615 meters so now what we have to design we have to design the uh, launder so for finding out the launder you have to find how much amount of water is getting collected in the launder as i have said it earlier you have to divide the discharge into two so our discharge our design flow rate which is a peripheral in nature it will become flow rate that is q in meter cube per second divided by 2 which will be coming about 0 0.1736 divided by 2 so our discharge for launder will be 0 0.0868 meter cube per second as the size of launder should be equal with respect to its inlet velocity of water must be equal to the outlet velocity of water so your velocity of water in the launder will be same as what we had assumed in step 1 that is 0 0.6 meter per second so area of launder will be coming about peripheral flow rate that is q divided by velocity that is 0 .0, uh, 0 0.0868 meter cube per second divided by 0 0.6 meter per second which will be coming out 1.446 meter square so you can go for directly uh, uh, area that is 1 meter multiplied by 0. 446 meters so let us have few review questions first is cascade aerator can remove carbon dioxide up to 60 uh, percent whether this statement is true or false maximum number of steps allowed in cascade aerator are maximum height of cascade aerator is limited to so what is the first answer yes it can remove up to 60 percent maximum steps allowed is six and maximum height of cascade aerator is always limited to 3 meters. So these are the references I have used to make this presentation. Thank you.